the, the right rules uh, being a nonprofit status. So yeah, if, if someone's thinking they're giving to Occupy but it's not actually Occupy, that could put their tax write-off in great jeopardy. Because they're not Occupy. They're friends of Occupy. They're a separate entity created as a nonprofit for tax reasons. Yeah, and there's a WePay page now. Yeah. That but didn't Occupy originally take money as donations? The original Occupy that was called <coughs> Occupy in Portland. Well, it was always in, in the name of some individual, like uh, Kip, you know, the guy Kip. It was, it was the, the WePay page for Occupy was was in his name and it goes to his bank account. Why would it be in his name and it was actually intended for Occupy? Well, you got to put it's somebody's it's name on, if you're going to set up with WePay, there's got to be a, a bank account. You can have that under a name of Occupy, a company name Occupy. You can have that under there. That's very easy. You go to any bank, they say you can have that. You can set up the, the name could have been Occupy. And they sign the checks Occupy, someone signs it, takes it down to the bank and they have an account. It's a business account under the name of Occupy. Isn't it? Yeah, because you, Without, you're, you're literally taking donations. It's a business. You can't take money in and not declare it a business. I'm not taking any money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. You can't take money in and not declare it a business. You're taking money in. That's a business. Once you start receiving money, it's a business. So if you're saying that an individual set it up in his own name, his own bank account, Donors would send money in, and he was responsible to make sure that money was diverted to the proper locations these donors want, and he also represented to every donor. That, and by the way, we are not a nonprofit, and you cannot use this as a tax write-off. If you use it as a tax write-off, that is considered illegal. The IRS is going to come back and hit you with penalties, and they represented that to these donors. I guess. Um, so these donors were aware of that when that money hit some account that I can't use that as a tax write-off and if I told you to spend that money toward the homeless you make sure that's going to be done and you'll provide me with accounting on that otherwise they lose their tax write-off oh you mean as it is now now that there is a non-profit not, now that there is a non-profit Friends of Occupy which is now considered a business. Money's going to go into there for the purpose of tax write-off. And everything that went on before then, I assume, I assume everything that went to Occupy before, everybody was aware they couldn't tax, use that for a tax write-off. Any donor, any donor that, that sent money in there either earmarked where they wanted that money to go, and I'm sure that it was documentation was sent that that money went to those certain directions because most people that donate money don't just throw it up in the air and say gee I'm going to donate all this money to a certain group they donate it with the expectation of having that money go to certain directions because that's why they're donating they believe in something they believe in uh, a march that took place uh, or, or whatever and they believe in certain causes and they want that money earmarked toward that and, and that's why it gets very complicated if, if that money isn't accounted for properly to make sure that that money's going to those directions. And I know a lot of people that would donate to a group, but if it didn't go in the direction they wanted to, they'd be very upset about that. They'd be extremely upset. And especially if they thought they could use it as a tax write-off and they found out that they couldn't even use it as a tax write-off, thinking that it was actually Occupy is not a nonprofit. That's why they can't give money to Occupy and take a tax write-off. Right. Now, the Friends of Occupy, my understanding, has just been created. They can do that right now. If the Friends of Occupy and the donor is clear on where that money's going and they're happy about it. If that donor is not happy where that money's going, that can create a lot of complications for a nonprofit. They're not just donating money to people out of, you know, out of the blue. They're doing it for certain reasons that they want to see that money go in, in certain directions. I think at least so far the only uh, thing that is the money is being used for is the rent. It's like there's the, the, the donors, trying to get 800 donors, a month. Are the donors aware of that? 
I don't know. I mean, I, well, I that, that, that'd be something you'd want to represent to them because they might think that money's going toward fluoridation issues. They might think that money's going toward uh, the homelessness. They might think that money's going toward educating people on poverty. They might think that money's going toward a lot of different causes. And if, if it's not made clear up front to the donor that's giving that money, then that's, that's not really doing a service to the donor. They want to know where that money's going. Well, I imagine they're probably telling them, uh, yeah, we need, we, uh, we, we're so much short for rent this month. And, uh, well, those are questions, as you know, when, you, when you're doing your YouTube that you can ask them on camera and say, when you're asking for this money, are you making sure the donors are aware where this money is going to go? Or do they think it's going into some other type of a cause or, or issues that are currently out there? And that's very important. Like, Josh, if I was standing there at the door and I knocked on your door and I said, I'm part of Occupy, but I'm actually friends of Occupy. And I'm asking for donations. And basically, uh, we, we are getting ready to do a rally in March on the, the gun laws. And... Uh, would you be willing to donate toward, toward that cause? And they might say yes. So they give me, say, $10. And, but it's actually going toward Friends of Occupy. So Friends of Occupy then technically has to come out here and put on the rally in the march. Because it's not Occupy. I donated to the nonprofit Friends of Occupy, not to Occupy. I took a tax write off on, from the Friends of Occupy. So I expect. If I say I'm funding that, then Friends of Occupy will be out here with their signs that says, Friends of Occupy, uh, we want more gun laws. Because I'm the donor. I'm making that representation on where I want my money to go. So technically, Occupy isn't taking the donations. It's Friends of Occupy. Well, I haven't, uh, I haven't noticed any, any real correlation between people interested in Occupy and people interested in more gun laws otherwise, necessarily. Otherwise. A lot of well, we had a we had a rally out. I know, but that had nothing to do with Occupy yes, necessarily. It is. There's people out here in Occupy that are out here part of that rally in the march. We okay, were out here so some overlap. So, yeah. Well, it's not overlap. We had people out here. Uh, I know it's a lot of people talking about Occupy. Is not just three people? I mean, I, I no, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I mean. But they're, they're, they consider themselves part of the Occupy Well, what do you movement. think about gun laws? Well, I think that people do have a right to have weapons, and I think that definitely uh, background checks are definitely necessary. Uh, and uh, it, it's finding the balance between uh, people having the right to, to have weapons and people who, who think there should be more uh, uh, safety uh, law put into place that will protect people so there's a balancing act here and um, that's my opinion right now it's very complicated so uh, and I guess what Mr. Hale said is that a lot of common sense has to come into play on on, on, on this issue and, and that's what's kind of being worked out right now and a lot of people say the mental health issues need to come into play on this so we'll, we'll wait and see what happens there but it's a, it's a very complicated issue What do you think on the gun law? Um, what would you like to see happen? If, you, if, if it was your choice and you could just say, this is what I want to see happen right now, what would you like to see happen? Um, no input from anyone else. Just you're able to make that decision. What do you want to see happen? Well, we've already lost if there's no input from anyone else. No, I mean, I mean I'm mean, i using that as an example that it's your free statement, what you want to say, what you believe in. Nobody else will have any input on that. So what do you want just from you, not relying upon input from I other I don't have parties. that strong an opinion. Um, well, I mean, you've seen what's happened at various schools. People have come in with, with assault rifles at, at the mall. There's been a, a tremendous amount of shooting because of that, easy access to these type of guns to uh, uh, basically uh, clips that hold a large amount of uh, bullets. A lot of people don't believe that assault rifles should be allowed uh, out in the general public. 
what, what's your opinion on that? Should people be allowed to carry an AR-15? Should they be allowed to have that? Should they be allowed to buy those types of assault weapons if they pass a background check? Um, yeah, I really tend to not not see much uh, use for increased regulation of that stuff. Uh, of the stuff pertaining to guns. Yeah. Okay. So what's your opinion on someone being able to walk into a school with an assault rifle and they've killed that many people? Do you think that schools should have more I don't more think security? they should do that. Well, they shouldn't do it, obviously. <laughs> but, I mean, do you think they should have more security is my point. I mean, um, would that be lack of security at schools that you think should be upgraded? Since you don't want to change anything on the gun law, do you think we should should step up our security then around schools where we've had these type of problems or large malls and actually beef up the security? So do you think we need more security is what I'm saying? Do you think we have enough? Do you think we currently have enough security at schools? That's my question to you. Um... Yeah, I don't, I don't, I, I, yes or no? I tend to, I think yes there's no? probably about enough. Well, let me ask you this. But if you go to a school and 20 students have been shot in that school, you think there's probably enough security at that school then? Do you think I mean, there was enough security at that school that day when a large group of people got shot by a guy carrying in an AR-15? you think there was adequate security that day? That's my question, yes or no. you think there was adequate security when someone walked into a school with an AR-15 and killed 10-plus students? Do you think there's adequate security at that school? Yeah, I'm not really sure if, if security... But you say yes. You say adequate security would allow 10 plus people to be shot at a school. If That's you had more security, yeah. then then the guy might, seems like, How go elsewhere where there's not security. There's always going to be public areas where large numbers of people congregate so let me where ask you can this. take out a lot of people, you, right? Let me ask you this. Do you think there was any security at that school when 20 people got shot? Uh, apparently not. I don't know. So... So with that in mind, not knowing, then we need to look at that issue and possibly make sure that there's adequate security at all those schools at all times. Because you don't want to do anything with the gun laws, which mm -hmm. is fine. But if an incident took place at a school or a mall, and we look at it as not having enough security, then we need to increase the security to prevent something like that happening. It's one or the other. The gun laws are the security. And for the shooters, mental health issues and making sure that they are looked upon sooner before something possibly might happen, any type of signals or any, anything that people might see or hear or see in writing. But the reality is, you can't have adequate security if someone went in there and, and, and shot a certain amount of people in a school. That's not adequate security. That's not adequate at all. It's unacceptable. Unacceptable. What's your opinion on that? Um, I, uh... I don't know. I, I still, I still have a hard time seeing a solution in increased uh, whatever locks. How about having metal an detectors? Actual, how about having an actual security guard that's there and, and tries to better monitor the school? That we should pay that extra money to make sure we have somebody that literally walks around, and their full-time job is to literally watch the school from every door and every angle and try to prevent something like that happening. Now, would that be an unreasonable thing to ask? If they're not going to do anything on any gun laws, which let's keep that separate, people want to have the right to have guns, that's okay. But I think anybody that would have a gun would say that they need to be responsible and 
any additional security at a school would be beneficial. I don't think anybody would argue with that, that any additional security at a school would be beneficial to have. So we're looking at just the cost of doing that. Now, who in their right mind would try to argue with that? Because they can't say there was adequate security if somebody went in there with a rifle and they shot a lot of people. That's not adequate security. So the security needs to be upgraded. There needs to be more issues pertaining to that, the security of that school. If they don't change anything toward the gun, there's got to be added security. And I think anybody that owns a gun would agree with that, that adequate security is definitely needed. And I don't think anyone would, would, would stand back and have an issue on that. Because there's nobody, a, a reasonable gun owner, that would disagree on that. And, and they want people safe like anyone else. And they would absolutely agree on that and say, absolutely, there should have been more security and there should be more security. But you're saying you think security is adequate where that could take place. And you don't think it's, the security it, it may be a little, Yeah, it, it seems, I don't know, I, I'm not, I don't have a strong opinion, but since you're like, you know, well, it, well I, just I'm not my thought. I'm, there's the whole uh, whack-a-mole uh, uh, scenario where, you know, you, you push, you, 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 you uh, is that what you call it? In? <laughs> well, that's your term. Don't don't put words in my mouth, Josh. Is that what John McCain called it, where you add more security in one area and and the problem just pops up somewhere else, you know? Since well, it wouldn't be, it seems to me to be almost a, a simplistic thought of more security just at schools to begin with, possibly large malls. Uh, and I think a lot of the public, whether they even had to do some type of a tax bond or whatever to help pay for it, I think you'd have a large percentage of the public would be glad to pay for it. And and just to have added security. And I think they should actually have a say on that because I think a lot of people would want that to happen. And 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 I think it's something necessary. And and I think a lot of responsible gun owners would absolutely agree on that. That yes, at schools and other places, let's let's add more security. Let's make sure that we have uh, more security. So yeah, I think they would absolutely agree on that. Let's make sure that when you walk through certain doors at a school, that they actually have uh, equipment in there that will actually trigger off if they think there's a gun on somebody. Let's monitor it more aggressively and, and see what we can do in that direction. So yeah, I think a lot of people would definitely agree with that. Because we, you know, you can't have proper security if someone gets in there like that. It's not, it's not adequate. It's not getting the, it's, it's not acceptable. So that's my position. So you said you thought the schools had adequate security. I disagree with you on that. And you said don't want to do anything on the gun laws. I agree with you on that. I think there should be a lot more debate on that, and I do believe that people do have a right to, to have their guns, and I think there's a, a tremendous amount of people that are very responsible that have guns, and they have every right to have guns. And, and a lot of these people, I think, would agree that security is something we really need to take a look at and, and, and make sure we can do things to to protect people in our schools and protect people in the malls and protect people in places that uh, tend to have larger groups of people. And uh, we need to do that with proper security. Yeah, I can see that. I can see, uh... And I think, like you say, I think the public and many gun owners out there would agree with that and we would agree to pay money in certain areas to, to have better security. I truly believe that. I think they would all step up together and say, yes, we need we need some better security and we're willing to to try to do something and, and, and get that in place. And 
course, we want to work on the economic issues. Absolutely, on how to fund it, and that's why I said... Well, the, the economic issues of, that affect everybody's satisfaction and everybody's mental health. Right. And so, yeah, that would... From the mental health issue of, of detecting maybe some warning signs of people that should be dealt with sooner, I absolutely agree with that. Uh, and, and sometimes that's a tough issue, and, and, and I think they're getting much better at that on, on, on detecting possibly signals or, or being more aware of situations that need to have action taken immediately to avoid any future problems. More or less harm reduction is what I consider it, making sure that they try to reduce any, any possible problems. work like we're doing on, on, on improving conditions for the least, people who have the least, and, you know, equality, and trying to create a, a more uh, caring kind of society, or a more communitarian, uh, based on freely giving and receiving, rather than competition and buying and selling. Do you think competition is bad? Well, it's inevitable, but we don't need to, in like in nature, natural selection. Uh, but, yeah, I think we overemphasize it a lot in our economic system. Do you think that being in the economic system, being somebody that has the ability to create a tremendous amount in, of money in a company, and somebody that doesn't have that ability, you think that's bad? You think that's bad that someone can create such great wealth? Yeah, I don't think we need money at all. Uh, I don't know. I, it's not bad in the context of uh, we're going to have well, let me ask you this money on, at all. Yeah, let me ask you this statement. Let me ask you this statement. A lot of people that you're talking about, the most vulnerable people out here, which I consider the homeless out here, disadvantages, disadvantaged possibly, uh, living in poverty, they don't have, a, like you were saying, enough money to pay for rent, food, clothing, disadvantaged. Now, they're living, they're living exactly what you're talking about. They don't have any money. They don't have any, but, but, but understand this too. And some prefer it that way. Okay, some, some prefer it, but I ask you this. Do those same people, do they go down to the shelters and eat food at these different shelters? Do they, do they go to these places and get clothing provided? Mm -hmm. Now, how do you think these shelters and everything are able to provide that? Do you think everything's just given to them? Because it's not. They actually have to go out and buy things like join. They have to buy sleeping bags and blankets and provide this to these people. They have to have that income to do that. So if they just stopped and said, we don't want income either, we want the public to say, don't send in donations. We don't want any income. Do you think that's beneficial for the people already that are disadvantaged? No, I wouldn't encourage them to stop uh, accepting donations. But that's money. You just said you don't want any type of capital. You just want it uh, to be a, a commune and people uh, plant their food out in the, in, the, in, in the land and they all live off of that and there's no money transferred. Everything is barter and trade and there's no money. There's no capital. Well, that, yeah, it's, it's we can do that. I you think, think that'd be good. You think? Well, a lot of the people who are living out here don't have any money, so they're already doing it. But you think they're doing well by living like that? A lot of the homeless, they don't have money, so they're living by what you're saying. They're already living that way. They have. It, it's called poverty. It's called not having uh, proper uh, medical health. They I'm don't living have, without money except for trying to money. Okay, TriMet money given to you by yeah. TriMet? No, people give me money to, to ride TriMet. So they, there's people out there that are actually giving you money for transportation that think that as a, a, as a human need is at the top of the list instead of housing and food. They say this money is well, for transportation. they're giving me housing and food, too, for free. But, and they, Somebody's giving you housing and food. Yeah. Who's doing that? Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm staying on Dan's couch. So someone's providing you that, okay. So you're being provided that. Do you think Dan is going to be able to provide that for another 2,500 people who are homeless out on the sidewalk? No, it's possible. 
model, I suppose. For but you're saying, you just said to me, that if the shelters decided to say, we don't believe in taking in any money, we don't believe in capitalism, then that means they can't take care of the people on the sidewalks, and you're actually getting free rent from Dan. Somebody must be paying something there because they pay property taxes, they pay electric, they pay insurance, they pay a numerous uh, bunch of other utilities. So somebody's paying something. You're leaving right. them free. Right, and he's paying for yeah, so, so somebody's paying money to do that, but you're there free. So what you're basically mm -hmm. saying is that you have the takers and the makers in society, and you want to have everything given to you free. That's the way you'd li like to live. Well... I didn't, no, no, I didn't say anything about takers and makers. Well, somebody that wants it to take it at no cost is a taker for free. Somebody that works for a living and they get money coming to them is they're making the money because they're working for it. So they're making money. So you want to be on the taker side of receiving yeah, everything. I'm make stuff too, but not for money. But how do you take care of the people that are living on the sidewalk? that need these shelters that need to take in money to be taken care of. And they can't even take care of them all right now. Who's going to take care of them? Well, I, if I had the solution, then I would eat Then you'd end homeless. <laughs> yeah. But I think the solution may lie in the direction of moving away from trade, moving away from... Uh, Property as a, the overriding model of how to conduct our our transactions, um, and yeah, easing up on that, you know, a little bit, uh, and right. sharing. Well, you know, that is a nice way of looking at things. The reality is, there's a tremendous amount of homeless people out here that are living the way that you want to live and they can't sustain by themselves and they have to go to shelters they have to get that food every day they have to get clothing and there's a tremendous amount of people out there like that they want housing you see they want housing i can ask oh, yeah. numerous people up and down the sidewalks although you're out here would you want to be able to move into an apartment that possibly could be provided to you whether through federal money grants or whatever and they always say absolutely yes so they want housing okay but there's a cost to getting that housing there's a cost to somebody is going to have to pay that housing whether this person gets it free and someone else is, is, is subsidizing it or paying for it there's a cost to that mm -hmm. but if you say we take all capital and we eliminate it and these people are already are not being taken care of what makes you think they're going to be taken care of then? There's going to be more homeless. There's going to be more people that aren't taken care of. That's all I'm saying. There's got to be a balance there. You can't just take away capital and, and expect these people to be oh. taken care of. I'm not talking about taking away capital within the context of if there's still capitalism happening in the larger society, I don't want to take away capital from the people what, who are helping you know, the homeless. You know what I think you're saying is that from the people that are currently helping the homeless, is that you're doing it, you're doing it, but it's just not enough help yet. You want to see more money come in from the federal government, more money come in from private donors, from foundations, and more money to come in to help take homelessness and end it. And I agree with you. That's what I've been trying to do. I want homeless ended in this city. I want it ended. I don't think there's any reason that homelessness should be in this city. I think we have the ability to end homelessness. And that's going to take more money being provided, more people getting more money coming in, and whether you like this or not, more housing being developed and people being able to go in there and have multi-services provided from mental illness, alcoholism, to drug addiction, to finding jobs, to various things all in one.